the odd rule. Now, we've seen that using a table of how far uh, objects fall after a few frames, uh, we could do straight ahead animation of a ball drop. We have the apex, and then if our next uh, key is uh, two frames later, we know that that's a little more than an inch uh, of a distance fallen, so we would have that. And then we could continue calculating these distances to see how far uh, the object would be four frames later or six frames later and measure those out. But, but you know, this would be a very tedious, uh, boring way of, of animating. And certainly, uh, animators don't approach uh, motion in this uh, highly mechanical way. Uh, it's not about calculating these distances and, and measuring them out. It's more important to, to see the rhythm that uh, is seen in the motion. What kind of rhythm do you find in the, in the timing and the, and the spacings? So uh, to help you see that rhythm, uh, it's helpful to know the odd rule. So the odd rule says that when an object's fallen, falling, uh, the spacings get larger and larger uh, because the object's speeding up. Uh, we already know that. But uh, the odd rule tells us that there's a very special pattern to how the spacings uh, get larger and larger. And that is that uh, they go in the ratios of uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, uh, so forth. So um, this is not a rough approximation. This is mathematically uh, the same as you would learn in a freshman uh, physics course in the university, just um, presented in a uh, way that hopefully is more useful uh, for animation, especially straight ahead. Now, uh, if that was the only type of motion that uh, followed the odd rule, it would be interesting, but not uh, as useful. But there's many cases where slowing out uh, follows the odd rule. Uh, an object rolling downhill is another example, uh, and we'll, we'll see more in, uh, in other uh, tutorials. So uh, something rolling downhill, it doesn't go as fast as uh, something which is uh, falling straight down. Nevertheless, the uh, ratios of the spacings uh, follow the odd rule. So it's uh, whatever the first spacing is, the next spacing is three times larger, and the next one is uh, five times the, the first spacing, uh, so forth. Now, this uh, result was actually discovered by uh, Galileo using rather uh, ingenious experiment. Uh, so he took some ramps and rolled uh, wheels or balls down the ramp. And when he had a ramp that had uh, notches at, that were evenly spaced, say, uh, every eight inches, then when the, when the ball went down the ramp, uh, he, he would hear a click as it passed over each notch. But since the ball was going faster and faster, the clicks sounded something like click, 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 click. Now, he had another ramp where the spacings were uh, set using the odd rule. So the first spacing maybe was one inch, the next spacing was three inches, the next spacing was five inches. And then when he rolled the ball down that ramp, the click sounded like click, 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 click. Of course, the ball was going faster near the bottom of the ramp, uh, but the fact that it was going faster, but the spacings were longer and exactly the right ratios uh, gave the clicks um, in a uniform, um, just like I was imitating a moment ago. So, And finally, Galileo discovered that that uh, happened uh, no matter how 
uh, shallow the slope or how steep the slope of the ramp. It always followed that pattern. So I would encourage you to uh, learn this uh, rhythm, this, this spatial uh, pattern, so that you can uh, easily uh, visualize it and, and, and see it. And you know that if you have a falling motion that follows this pattern, then it's going to look uh, believable in terms of how uh, motion is, is slowing out. Going back to the exercise of the ball drop, if we have already decided on uh, our first apex drawing and our second one, and we know that the ball falls about a uh, uh, little over an inch, um, in the first two frames, then seeing that we can now start using the odd rule uh, and we have an estimate as to what this uh, next position would be and uh, just visually we could estimate the one after that um, so forth. Finally the uh, odd rule also applies in many cases when uh, something is slowing in. So uh, when uh, friction is slowing uh, the motion, then uh, usually uh, slowing in and coming to a stop uh, also uh, follows the, the odd rule. Uh, in later tutorials, we'll see lots of examples where slowing in and slowing out um, follows the, the odd rule. Uh, essentially, whenever the acceleration is constant and whenever forces are constant, then uh, slowing in and slowing out follow the odd rule. Uh, falling in perspective is a little more complicated, but you can still use the odd rule and uh, it sort of gives you an indication of how uh, the size of something gets smaller as it's falling away from the camera, say. And um, although motion often follows the odd rule, there are cases where uh, we have a, a change. For example, if we have a, an object that's fairly light and it starts to fall, uh, the, for the first few frames perhaps it follows the odd rule because the object's not going very fast, the air resistance is not very strong. But after a while, it, it gains enough speed that air resistance is significant. And uh, in fact, with air resistance, the motion uh, transitions to uh, uniform motion. So uh, this picture is a little bit simplified. It's not a sudden transition like this. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, this is approximately uh, what happens with uh, falling motion with, with air resistance. Uh, again, we'll see more of that in future tutorials. So, in summary, uh, slowing out from the apex, the spacings of falling motion follow the odd rule. And the odd rule means that spacings go in the ratios of 1 to 3 to 5 to 7, uh, so forth. There's um, other cases besides simple falling that follow the odd rule, such as uh, rolling downhill. And there's also cases uh, of slowing in where something is losing speed, such as uh, sliding to a stop by friction, that, that also tend to follow the odd rule. So uh, there you have it. Now, uh, this is mostly useful for straight ahead animation, uh, but the, there's other uh, rules which are useful for uh, pose to pose, and we'll see some of those in the uh, next tutorials. See you then.